Hello and welcome to E Presumes Five Side Chance. Not as good as Stephanie Ours, but hey, it's something. This is the second video where I'll be trying to wrap up the year. Now, here's the thing. Even though the presidential election just happened and Biden hasn't even been sworn in yet, people are already speculating about 2024, so we're gonna do just that. <laughs> and now here's the thing. Even though I know, you know, we should wait for Biden to govern and see how things play out before we start making plans. This is literally going to be the one and only time that I'm talking about 2024. Literally until 2023 or even like late 2022 when candidates would start officially announcing there will be a 2024 embargo on this show. This is the one and only time where 2024 speculation will come out of this show's mouth. I will even attempt to try and prevent me from talking about it in the, like, Twitter sphere and such. No 2024 talk after this. Just gonna get it out of the way now. No developments. When a person is seen in New Hampshire, I don't care. When a person is seen, I don't care until they announce. We have things to talk about in the here and now, so let's get right into the news. First, we're going to do something that's tried and true. Republican hypocrisy. Yeah. Republicans ready to become deficit hawks again under President Biden. Republicans are preparing to re-embrace their inner deficit hawks after greenlining big spending bills under President Trump. GOP senators say they expect to refocus on curbing the nation's debt and reforming entitlement programs starting in 2021, as the Congressional Budget Office estimates that the debt has surpassed the size of the American economy. I think it's kind of getting back to our DNA. I think spending, entitlement reform, growth, the economy are all things that we're going to have to focus on next year. And yeah, I would expect you'll hear a lot more about that, said Senator John Thune, the number two Senate Republican. Now, again, this is the tried and true Republican hypocrisy. They didn't give a single crap about the deficit during... Trump's administration, during the Republican administrations, they don't care about the debt and deficit. During the Democrat administrations, that's all they can talk about. Because it's that same stupid Washington bubble that makes people for some reason think that Democrats just spend a whole lot more than Republicans. I don't know if there's any actual information to back up that, you know, the government spends more under Democrats than... You know, it spends as, you know, Republicans, especially considering it's the try and true thing of like, everybody makes this point, national security, um, guns, like literally anything involving the military or whatever, they will spend literally every single cent we have, we need to spend more money, we need to raise defense spending, we need to raise them, like, all this money, but then when it comes to entitlement programs, they're like, <gasps> I think we need to be a bit more rational with our money. It, it It's literally just they don't care about the poor people, even though they claim to be the most religious people. They're just literally hypocrites. They're literally hypocrites. There's nothing else to say. And, and especially considering these guys are trying to make it like a, you know, I think I'm so glad that we're getting things back to basics. It's like, no, no, you're wrong. You're just hypocrites. The media shouldn't be even allowing John Thune's the ability to say that. When John Thune says, you know, it's us getting back to our roots, the media should immediately respond with, you're a hypocrite, and you should not be in the Senate right now. They're little frauds. Nobody respects them. There's a reason why people don't even talk about Republicans in that much of a realm sphere. Because they're just just so stupid in La La Land. No one seems to understand. The liberal types, they at least try to form like actual brain things, like brain ideas, but Republicans are just so far off in La La Land that there's nothing there. Okay, anyways, moving on to the next story. The Biden administration, he unveiled a slate of top foreign policy and national security picks. Coincidence, those were what I was just talking about. Cuban-born Alejandro Mayorkas, a former deputy secretary of the DHS who Biden nominated to lead the department, will be tasked with building an agency that carried some of the most draconian measures against during President Donald Trump. 
Anthony Blinken will be Secretary of State. Linda Thomas Greenfield will be the UN Ambassador. Jack Sullivan will be the White House National Security Advisor. John Kerry will be Climate Czar. Now you see, here's another thing. Like, as you can see, like, I mean, well, we can't see, but like, the title of this article is Joe Biden nominates first woman to lead intelligence and first Latinos to head homeland security. That's the aspect that they're focusing on. But of course, they don't focus on the records. And it just seems like they're just average corporate Democrat types. I mean, nowhere is that more evident than literally nominating John Kerry for the spot. Like, I mean, again, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure he's not like, he's not in that much of a big field thing. Like, I mean, if he were nominated to be like Secretary of State, that'd be like even more egregious probably. But, you know, he's, like, the fact that he's in the administration shows that it's just the old guard type holding on to whatever last stand they have. There's honestly not much else I could say about the administrations. I haven't looked into most of their records, so we're just going to have to wait and see. There is one pick that is interesting, but not for the reason that you would think. Marsha Fudge as Agriculture Secretary. Now, I don't know much about Fudge. You know, she, I, I, I went into some of her, like, stuff in the past. Like, she was floated as a potential challenge to Nancy Pelosi for speaker. And, even, and they were trying to say, like, she was going to be, like, a good challenge, even if she was, like, to her right. Which she kind of was. At least in one aspect, she, she raised a whole lot more, like, she took a lot more corporate money than Nancy Pelosi, honestly. <laughs> weirdly enough. But it turns out she really wants to be agriculture secretary. Which makes sense, I guess. I guess, you know, she's from Ohio, so I don't know if that's particularly a agriculture-heavy state. Maybe it is, I don't know. But it's notable just for one aspect. Then we'll open up a special election in a safe blue seat, which has had some speculation of Nina Turner running for that safe blue seat. Hmm... Me likey. I, I would like that a lot. So yeah, hashtag Marsha Fudge for Agriculture Secretary just so we can get Nina Turner in the um, House of Representatives because she would 100% be a great person to be in the House. So anyways, let's move on to the next story. These two relate to foreign policy blunders, I guess. First, Venezuela. Venezuela's been doing some things. A Venezuelan judge convicts six American oil executives, orders prison. Six American oil executives held for three years in Venezuela were found guilty of corruption charges by a judge Thursday and immediately sentenced to prison, dashing hopes of a quick release that would send them home to their families in the United States. Some relatives have been bracing for the disheartening outcome, which came on an event on Thanksgiving Day. Like, here's the weird thing, and this is why I do get a bit sus. You see, this article is painting these people 100% as, like, these are pure-hearted saints. They're oil executives, you know, and they're just saints. They're just good people that Venezuela just kidnapped for no reason. And it makes me seem suspect because Venezuela, they're saying, you know, we're trying these people on corruption charges because they're from Citgo. Citigo, whatever. Basically, they're saying that these guys... You know, these are corrupt individuals that should be punished. And since they did business in Venezuela, you know, we will punish them. If that's true, then sure. If that's in the full extent of Venezuelan law, sure. I don't know much about the story, but I felt that it was best noting because I guess some somebody's in the audience is going to look it up and do more better research than I am, and they'll probably let me know. A second big foreign blunder was a top Iranian nuclear scientist was assassinated. Now, you see, they say that it was Israel or the United States, or potentially both. And that's 100% believable, considering, you know, you know, U.S. and Israel and Iran, they don't necessarily have the most nice relationship. You know... But I, I, I will say, I don't know. It's not 100% confirmed, and we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully not for a third world war. So, let's find out. This could potentially be a Trump-like 
you know, he knows he's on his last leg and he knows he's going to lose. Like he's he's on his way out. He did the official like conceding. So he it, this is probably going to be his last leg like, "Oh, we're going to do this big war, so I'm going to have to stay in power or whatever." Okay, so speaking of transition of power, 2024 2024 election we don't entirely know what the main issues of the election will be it is speculated that it will still be COVID-19 or here's another actual interesting speculation the interesting speculation is that due to the fact that governors have been sort of being put on the forefront of the COVID-19 response due to the fact that Trump was like so lackluster it puts governors in more of the limelight for potentially, like, running for president. Which some, it would be a good thing. Some would not be so much a good thing. Like for example, if Andrew Cuomo ran, that wouldn't be so hot. If Roy Cooper ran, you know, that might be a bit more interesting. Because Roy Cooper, even the Dem- even Republicans in the state have been kind of like saying, like, he's been doing fine with his COVID response. He could do better, but, you know, he could do worse. But basically, the, like I've been like the Wikipedia article for this um, election has been changing very frequently. You see, uh, I mean, of course it has because this is it, we're, it's 2020 and we're already speculating 2024. It's gonna change a lot. Half of the people on this list are just gonna be deleted because the speculation will just not be substantiated by any fact. They literally take like a person stepping foot outside of their house as like this is a potential campaign moment basically and even like there are some people who have already denied the potential of being candidates in 2024 but they're just saying like like i mean it's just honestly expected like come on they're they're more than likely going to at least potentially do an exploratory committee so basically we're pretty much going to have to go off of not only this list, but also, like, I'm gonna give some, like, ideas of, like, what I think could potentially be, like, sort of the fights that go on in 2020 for, and one other aspect is, will it just be two-party fight once more, or will we potentially get the third challenger? Okay, so, I think... Since the Democrats will be the ones holding the White House in 2024, we should start off with the Republicans because there are quite a few Republicans that have either expressed interest or, you know, are just potential candidates. And let me just rattle off the names. There's Dan Bognio, who is a commentator radio host, Chris Christie, Sean Hannity, Robert O'Brien, Candace Owens, Marco Rubio... Those are the ones who outright say that they're interested, but then there are some other potential ones like Greg Abbott, who is the governor of Texas, Charlie Baker, Massachusetts governor, Tom Cotton, Dan Crenshaw, Ted Cruz, Nikki Haley, Larry Hogan, Rand Paul, Mike Pence, Mike Pompeo, Ben Sass, Rick Scott, Tim Scott, Donald Trump Jr., and Eric Trump Jr. But then... There is one more name that is in that, that sort of goes with that last two. Donald Trump himself has floated his name as a potential candidate in 2024. Now, here's the thing. That is going to be a very contentious thing, and I will get to that later. But let me first start off with what I think will be the divide in the GOP come 2024 it is very clear what the divide will be will they run back to the trumpism that literally just cost them the white house or will they try to run back to the gop establishment romney types romney himself has said that he will not run as a candidate in 2024 but that is very unlikely to be what he actually does. I mean, come on. It's Romney. He, he'll run. Probably. Basically, here's what we're going to be seeing. And we're going to get different flavors of each, ri- of each ring, too. Okay, so basically, here's what I think the GOP 
process will be in 2024. We will get some candidates who will run as super anti-Trump. You know, someone like a Mitt Romney, someone like a John Kasich, someone like, um, who's another fierce, like, Republican Trump critic? I don't know. One of those two. One of those two will, or maybe even both, like, they might run, like, especially considering this is the GOP, they're going to be, like, an open field campaign. These two will run as a sort of, like, super anti-Trump candidate. Like, I was super never against Trump. We were never Trumpers, the end. And we're so, like, they're, they're basically, that's what they'll do. They'll run as the super anti-Trump guys, and they'll try to get, like, liberal bonus points to try and win over those never-Trumpers that might have potentially voted for Biden. The very few that actually did. Because it's apparently a huge voting base, I guess. Then you're going to get the other side of the aisle. You're going to get the super pro-Trumpers. But even then, these guys will kind of be divided on which direction they go. You see, you're going to get some folks that are going to be like Josh Hawley, who will run as sort of like the fake populist type. Or you might get the ones like a Tom Cotton, who will try to focus on like, I'm super like, like Nazi-esque type guy. Which, of course, leads to the question, which I think I should address now. Will the pro-Trump voice be, you know, Trump? I really don't think so. I don't think Trump will pull himself to be an embarrassment again. I think, honestly, Trump, this is just like him just being a big baby and then when push comes to shove, he actually won't even seek another term. Like, he won, he lost, there's not much else he could do. There's, of course, potential that Trump runs for a second non consecutive term, but even then, I don't think he'll win. And I think if he does seek another term and then loses again, he'll just give it up at that point. But then, there are going to be two more crowds that you'll see. And this crowd might be big or might be small. See, this crowd will be the Trump moderate types. What do I mean by this? The ones who say just enough to satiate the never Trumpers, but also say just enough to satiate the Trumpers. You know, the Tim Scotts, the Nikki Haley's, uh, honestly, those two, they haven't necessarily been super pro-Trump, but they haven't necessarily been super anti-Trump. They've just been saying just enough to satiate both sides. So that way, when push comes to shove, they don't have plausible deniability either way. Basically, Scott will say, like, hey, I was never really that pro-Trump anyways. I agreed with him when I agreed with him. And, like... Sassy. I should have mentioned Sassy as well. But I think Haley and Scott also have one added bonus of like the idea of like we're going to be the antithesis of the identity politics. You know, we're going to show that not all women vote for Democrats, not all black people vote for Democrats. Basically, that's what they would do. And then the last group would be the Libertarians. Basically, Rand Paul. <laughs> Basically, here's what Rand Paul would do. He would, he would kind of be the same thing. He will say the same things either way, but he'll just so happen to change his messaging. Like, if the GOP openly loves Trump come 2024, he'll campaign like, oh, me and Trump, we agreed on a lot. You know, we agreed on ending the wars and blah, blah, blah. Which will be funny because you're going to get the ones that are going to be like Tom Cotton, who are going to campaign on all of Trump's super pro hawkish stuff. But then you're going to get Rand Paul, who's going to be campaigning on super anti, like, anti-interventionist kind of Trump. It's going to be like the Tea Party fight over and over again, where you had, like, this... I mean, they didn't even get to do that, you know. If the idea was, like, you'd have, like, the Palinites and you'd have the Paulites. But then, of course, there's another wild card. Mike Pence. You see, Mike Pence, he's establishment Republican, you know, extraordinaire. But he also has the Trumpites. 
because he's sort of the wild card. Like, like you know, Trump picked him to be the VP. So, like, like much how like Biden was picked to be Obama's VP. It, even the whole point of them being picked was to balance the ticket. You know, Obama was trying to represent the, you know, progressive, cool, young people. Meanwhile, Biden was supposed to be the guy that was supposed to be like, look, guys, lib- like rich white moderates. I know you guys don't want to nominate a black man, but trust me, he's not like you know who. Basically, he was the like, guys, don't worry, you're going to have a safe white man in the house. That was basically Biden's whole spiel. And this has happened a million times before, and it'll happen a million times since. JFK was a Catholic Massachusetts liberal. Meanwhile, LBJ was the populist, you know, Democrat Baptist. That's who. That's what these two were, and that's what Pence was to Trump. Even though they will associate with him with the like radicalism of like, yeah, Pence was there to drain the swamp. Like they'll associate him with that. Polling wise, eh, honestly, again, polling at this point, it really doesn't bother. The election's not that far away, but it will say Trump seems to be leading. So, anyways, now let's move on to the Democratic side. The Democratic side is expected to be a whole lot more quiet. Because, for one, you might say, well, yeah, it's because Biden's going to be in the White House. Why would they run against him? Well, as you've probably already noticed, Biden has indicated that he will not seek a second term. But he's also given some slight indications that he might seek a second term. There is a potential that he seeks a second term, but honestly, I really don't think so. Throughout the entire 2020 election, I was thinking, either way the election goes, neither of these two will run again. If Biden won... You know, Trump would have been like, I accept my, I would have, like, he wouldn't have accepted his defeat, but he would have been like, he would have been defeated and he would have retired or something. Meanwhile, if Trump won, you know, Biden would be too old and he, and Trump would be like ineligible to run again, so it didn't matter. Biden, he, I don't think he will. He just, he's just too old at this point. It's expected, it's wildly expected that Kamala Harris will be the sort of de facto incumbent. She will not be the official incumbent, obviously, because she will be the vice president, not the president, but she will be considered the de facto incumbent, you know, when Biden, you know, says that he doesn't want to seek another term, he will either actually endorse Kamala, or he will give an indication that Kamala is a good leader, while not officially endorsing her, giving like the, you know, saying like, hey guys, it's Kamala's turn. Let her go. So obviously Kamala has been expected to be in the presidential running in 2024. But she's not the only person. It There has been some spe- enough speculation that there might be some, a couple more people in the fray. Because again, if she... Like, if Biden himself does not run, it will still technically be open season. There will probably be less candidates than if it were a legit open season. But... You know, there'll still be a decent amount of candidates. When I say decent amount of candidates, I mean, like, literally very few. There have been some speculations, you know, like I said, a couple of governors have been speculated. Roy Cooper has had his name thrown out as a potential, like, he was seen as, like, oh, he's probably the only guy in, he's the only Democrat that can probably win North Carolina. Gavin Newsom and Andrew Cuomo have had their names thrown out in the ring, obviously, because Newsom, it's pretty evident that he will, at one point, run for president. And Cuomo, everybody's been saying like it's only a matter of time before he actually does. I think at this point he's kind of becoming the Mitch Landrew. For those who don't know, Mitch Landrew, he's this guy who was like, he was like a mayor of New Orleans, I think. And like they keep trying to get him to run for anything in Louisiana, anything, governor, senate, you know, house, something, because they think like he's one of the few people who can actually flip something in Louisiana. But no, he doesn't even attempt. He comes from a political dynasty family, even. But anyways, there's been a couple more speculations, but the biggest speculation comes from my side of the aisle. You know what I'm talking about. 
the left. And this is the heart, the disheartening part. Even though Britney's name has been floated, it it actually has, and one hundred percent actually has. It's pretty clear. Nah, 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 that ain't happening. Nah. The it, it's it's officially time to pass the torch. That's it. If Bernie did run, that would be cool, but at this point, it probably is time to just pass the torch. Now, there have been a couple of people who have been speculated to be the torch bearer come 2024. Realistically, only two. Nina Turner and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Nina Turner, even though we admit she's probably, like, it would probably be AOC, if any, if it was anything, it would be AOC, because AOC just has a higher profile. Especially considering there's potential that she's going to be running against Chuck Schumer in 2022. So, you know, we'll be seeing if she's going to be senator at the time. Now, there's also been the idea of the wild card. You know, Andrew Yang has had his name flooded back into speculation but one person that I honestly haven't seen much speculation for that I 100% think will run is Tulsi Gabbard. Just 100%. I, th- I think it'll be Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard will run. I don't think she'll win. But I think she'll 100% run. But like, again, I don't know if she will win. I mean, I know she won't win. But she will run 100%. And she'll try and do the same thing that she did before. Like, oh, I'm a little bit of, you know, um, lefty. I'm a little bit of, you know, libertarian. I'm a little bit of Republican. I'm a little bit of everything. And now comes the interesting thing. Thing my channel is sort of based on. Third parties. What will what will be of third parties come the next presidential election cycle? Honestly... We don't know. Because even, like, I mean, like, like, let's just look at the ones that are speculated. These are the potential candidates. These are the people who have actually been floated as potential candidates in the mainstream media. Howie Hawkins, who has filed for 2024. He has filed. Jesse Ventura. He has apparently floated his name. He won't run. He just won't. He won't. He didn't run before. He hasn't run in any prestigious election that he has ever floated his name in. He's not running. The end. I made the same... I made the mistake this cycle. Until I see Jesse officially announce he's running for president, I am not going to be entertaining any notion of Jesse Ventura for president ever. No stupid draft Jesse campaign. No stupid whatever. Unless he officially runs, he is the same political stupid joke that everybody knows him as. Now, I know his stupid fanboys will literally be like, No, he's super serious in political endeavors and blah, blah, blah. Buddy, he is known as the candidate that says, I will run, and then never does. That's his whole shtick. The fact that you don't know this just shows you're so ill-informed. But many things. You know who you are. You know who I'm talking about. Everyone knows who I'm talking about. But I don't care anymore. Just done. Who cares? The end. No Ventura 2020. The end. Everybody who has Jesse 2024 in their bio and Twitter is just lying themselves. Now on the independent side, we have Mark Cuban, Brock Pierce, and Kanye West. Now honestly, I don't care about any of them. One's an accused predator. One is a far-right Christian, who for some reason has overlap with Jesse people, and one is Mark Cuban, so no. Now, of course, that leaves out some names. You know, Constitution Party hasn't been mentioned, though to be honest, I don't know if the Constitution Party will still be around in 2024, at least on the national level. You know, at this point, maybe it'll be state-run party-only time. And the next one is the Libertarian Party. You know, the Libertarian Party. I don't know what they're going to be doing. My guess would probably be Justin Amash and um, Vermin Supreme run for their nominations. One trying to be an actual serious, like, contender for the nomination. 
the other one, you know, doing his typical shtick. Though maybe being slightly more serious, I don't know. You have, of course, all those other small, tiny political parties. But really, the only one whose endeavor I should honestly pay attention to at all is the People's Party. But the People's Party, I haven't seen what their official plan for 2022-2024 is. But we're going to base this on the assumption that they will run a candidate in 2024. The question is, who? The only name that has been floated is Nina Turner. They're actually, wait, hold on. That's technically not true. There have been some folks who've been trying to get Ventura or Nina. And I think David Branna. And there is, to a degree, some, like, uh, Maria, whatever her last name is. You know, potentially getting Chris Hedges to do it. You know, just, there have been a couple names. We don't know which one will be the most serious. Because, again, it's 2020 and we're talking about 2024. I think there will be someone... And I think, I think to a degree, let me, let me give some other speculation. I think to a degree, someone is trying to make it them. Because remember Howie Hawkins that I mentioned before? Howie Hawkins has filed for president in 2024. But do you know what he filed as? His party affiliation is other. Now I think that's an indication that he won't 100% guarantee that he will be running as a green. Hmm. Very interesting. There's honestly not much else I could say, so 2024 speculation goes away. See you when 2024 actually becomes relevant again. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell to be notified when the future video mine comes out. And if you're interested in more content from me, you can go to my website, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord, or check out my articles on the Independent Political Report.